Former President Donald Trump testified under oath today in his New York civil fraud trial, at times mimicking his appearances on the campaign trail and angering the judge. I'm not here to hear what he has to say. That was what rang true, loud, and could not have been more honest coming from the judge who has already predetermined that my client committed fraud before we even walked into this courtroom. I am certain that he will engage in name calling and taunts and race baiting and call this a witch hunt. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters are the facts and the numbers. And numbers, my friends, don't lie. Trump is denying any wrongdoing here, testifying that Mar-a-Lago was actually undervalued, and he claimed that any overstated estimates of his properties would be, quote, non-material because he's worth billions. Trump also said, quote, the fraud is on the court, not on me, close quote. And this has been anything but your typical trial. On the stand today, Trump attacked the judge and the process. And joining us to discuss is North Central College professor Stephen Caliendo <laughs> and a Professor, the judge in the case telling Trump at one point and I quote here, this is not a political rally and asking Trump's attorney to reel in his client. What do you make of this approach by Trump? Well, Natalie, it's an interesting one to be sure. Um, you know, I, I don't exactly understand what the strategy is. It's possible that a lot of this is angling for particular appeals uh, and that, that may be what's happening. But uh, the, the, the political part of it, we can't ignore. I think what's unique about this one compared to the other trials and the other uh, legal uh, battles that the former president's facing now is this really is about his identity as a human being, as a person, what he values the most, and that is his wealth. And so he's very much rankled by some of these assertions. Trump's attorneys, they want the judges to declare a mistrial. Any insight into the odds of that actually happening? Well, that's typical. I mean, that's 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 good. Uh, it's good lawyering. I mean, they should make that motion. I mean, that's not uncommon, but there's really no basis for it. I mean, the basis can't be that there's you can't just declare that there's uh, that there's some kind of bias. Uh, and I think that's a problem that Donald Trump has had throughout the political portion of his career, at least. And that is that if he just says it loud enough, if he says it enough times, if he says it with enough conviction, then that means it's true. Uh, and you can't get away with that when there's when there's process involved. You can't get away with that in a courtroom. And so any arguments of bias will have to be taken up by an appeals court, uh, but it's not going to be, uh, this judge isn't going to, to rule that he is biased himself and therefore dismiss the case. And I kind of want to stick on that topic. In this case, you have a judge and a state's attorney who are both Democrats, and the attorney general campaigned on taking Trump to court. So do you think that would stand up uh, in the case of an appeal? Again, it's it's not, I mean, the political partisanship is not, is not biased in and of itself, uh, in the legal system, for sure. Um, and so they, they, I, my guess would be no. I mean, there has to be something legally that is wrong. Uh, with the process, with the proceedings. Really what this is about, though, for Donald Trump is the court of public opinion. Uh, it does, of course, matter what happens in this trial. He's already been found uh, liable for fraud, um, even before these parts of the proceedings, which are really about the monetary aspects of it. How much is he going to have to pay? Could he lose his license to practice business in New York? But really what's important is what happens when we just saw his attorney comes and stands in front of the microphones and talks about next year's election. Uh, or talks about uh, the failed gubernatorial bid uh, of, the, of the prosecutor, for instance. And so this is where the political part comes in, and that's very important as well. In terms of the monetary aspect mm -hmm. of this, though, Professor Caliendo, what is on the line for Donald Trump in this trial in terms of his livelihood? Yeah, a lot of it's uh, money, uh, you know, just fines and so forth, but it's also the ability to continue to practice uh, for the Trump organization to do business in New York City, uh, which is significant. And it's, while it's, you know, maybe significant to Donald Trump personally uh, in his 70s, it's an organization that's a family organization that, that his, uh, you know, his two sons in particular are very involved in. So there's certainly legacy involved with that as well. Um, so it's not just the political and it's not just the personal. There are some actual uh, financial ramifications that are at stake as well. And Ivanka Trump will be testifying his daughter on Wednesday, and that should wrap things up with this trial. Professor Caliendo, thank you so much.